I help seven students get into MNT at UPenn, and in this video we're going to be talking about everything from the students themselves, similarities and difference between their applications, trends I've noticed, and of course, the juicy question of how do I get into MNT in 2025. So what's up guys, I'm Moe Thefro, and for those of you who don't know, I'm a senior in MNT, and I help people with college advising. If you're interested in working with me, you can email me at mustafadoesstuff at gmail.com. These are all students that worked with me, uh, bar one, which I'll get into. And uh, if you're interested in working with me, email me early. I've been getting a lot of requests uh, recently, and it's been hard to respond to all of them, especially closer to the deadline. I'll still respond up to the deadline if I can, but if you're interested in working with me, just shoot me an email. I'm friendly. You know, you can just be like, hey, what's up, bruv? And I'll be like, yo, what's up, bruv? Uh, but let's get into the video. I've helped six people plus myself get into MNT, and my application was not so simple. I transferred to MNT, so I spent my whole first year at Penn after getting rejected from MNT, uh, trying to figure out how to transfer. But we're gonna be talking about these six students who I got in over the past two years. And when I say two years, I really mean one and a half cycles since this regular decision cycle is not up yet. So out of about 90-ish students that have gotten in, I've helped six of them. Um, and I have helped other students get into other top schools. I had a Princeton this early cycle, thankfully, and a number of other top colleges. Uh, so if you're interested in working with me, like I said, shoot me an email. So uh, these six students have gotten in over the past two-ish cycles. Three of them got in on this early decision cycle, and then uh, three of them were prior to this early decision cycle. And basically, I think that there's been a few trends with students getting in and a few similarities that we see across all the students. And the first similarity being impact, right? The students have done something with impact, and that's really the biggest trend that you'll notice uh, throughout all of MNT. I wouldn't say that the students all had the same applications or like, you know, that there's a huge commonality between what they applied with. Some were CS, some were not CS, some were just random majors uh, like electrical engineering or mechanical or like that kind of thing. And I would say that certainly the only common thread that I can really pull out of it, not the only, but the main common thread is really impact. You see them doing things that are impactful, whether that be doing things on a nonprofit sense, doing things on a pure business sense. Uh, I had students that get in with both. With that being said, these are all students that were college advising students of mine, um, and I got to see their whole application in and out. I mean, I helped them write their essays in most cases uh, very directly, actually in all cases very directly. And basically what we've been noticing as for trends in the past uh, two years is you see this sharp AI focus from students, which makes sense. A lot of people are implementing AI, but you'll notice that the students that are getting in are generally utilizing AI, but they aren't necessarily AI wizards themselves or like really hard into AI research or something like that. More often than not, you'll see them just utilizing, implementing AI. And it makes sense. If you're going to get into MNT with that hard AI wizard type application, you have to be really superb. It's really hard to compete on that AI front. But if you're able to take some angle where maybe you're using AI for a project or maybe you're just not AI oriented at all and you're just going a completely different route, it's a little bit easier uh, to get in, I would say. I think that there's high competition on the AI side and you have to do something that really impresses people um, in order to get in with that hard AI angle. So, uh, and it makes sense. I mean, MNT is really a business program at the end of the day. They're really trying to get people that want to make impact and do something useful with AI, not just, you know, become AI researchers or something like that, although that is some subset of MNT. With that being said, a couple of trends that I've noticed. I've been noticing a sharp increase in the care for grades. As you guys probably know, test optional is being removed the next cycle onward, meaning that if you are still waiting to apply to college, you can no longer go test optional. And I think there was a rubber band effect that happened with schools, like MNT in particular, where a lot of good students, uh, well, a lot of students got in to top colleges, rather, with low SATs. And the schools know this. They test optionaled it. Generally, if you're test optionaling, you don't have a good SAT. And the students that test optionaled had a way lower average GPA and just performed worse overall in terms of academics, um, which, you know, schools are kind of having this rubber band effect where they're like, okay, this test optional thing, we tried it for a while. Uh, let's start to care about grades again a little bit more. We had a historically low period like a period where we cared about grades less than ever before. I mean, the fact that we were test optional and taking 1,300, 1,200 SATs uh, to top colleges makes, you know, it's proof of that. But now we're seeing a rubber band effect where when you want to apply to MNT, having those high grades, having those APs, having the hardest, you know, math and whatever you can take in your school is increasingly important. Those things, you know, there's some level of leeway given, you know, you have a 39X, like, okay, it's not the end of the world. You don't need like a perfect 4.0, but taking more APs, Doing better in your SAT and your classes is uh, becoming more and more important for the next, I would say, probably four cycles uh, that we're going to see. It's likely to become important or more and more, more and more important. And of course, schools like MIT already went back to test required, but Penn and uh, a bunch of other schools like 
are moving back to test requirement for the next cycle. With that being said, the other trend we notice is a strength in extracurriculars trend. Now, uh, unfortunately, this means that basically everyone that's applying has much stronger extracurriculars than say even four years ago. Before ChatGPT, it was harder to get extracurriculars out. It was harder to be efficient. And nowadays we're seeing an increased strength in extracurriculars. This isn't really you know, advice for what you should be doing. This is basically work harder, uh, this is the advice that I'm giving. But um, we're seeing more grand extracurriculars. We're seeing things along the lines of you know, building, you know, $10,000 machines, making, you know, raising a hundred grand for like hackathons and stuff, or like just doing uh, crazy, crazy things. I mean, like things that, like I said, four years ago were much harder to do, but now with ChatGPT, you can reach more people. You can email more people. You're a lot more efficient in your work. We're seeing a general increase in the strength of applicants that have been applying the last few batches. One thing I forgot to mention is that a very common similarity I saw among the students is that students had very visible ECs. They had extracurriculars where you could really see it. They had things like websites, which the director of the program himself, uh, Gad, really likes to see and uh, encourages students to do in the webinars. I mean, usually websites or some sort of publicity, and this is a general trend for college admissions and something that you should be including in your applications if you can. Build a website with photos of what you've done, uh, put, you know, in like information about your extracurriculars, show what you've done, don't just tell about it. Those things look really good to m &T. And it's something that I did see as a trend with my students that got admitted is that generally they had things that were very visible. So uh, if you can get press or something early on, highly recommend that. Make sure to take photos of your extracurriculars if you're watching this early. Now, of course, the juiciest part of the video, my opinion on how to get into m in 2025. So step one is impact. Impact, impact, impact. I can't say it enough. Do something that does something. Uh, although it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, not counterintuitive, but rather not specific, you know, you really need to do something that's impressive. Something that when you tell someone about it, right, it doesn't just sound wishy-washy. For example, say I'm working on a nonprofit that provides, you know, flashcards to schools or something, right? It's a flashcard software for schools, right? If I was talking about that, just developing the software is not enough, right? And this is advice that I've given in my other m and videos, but I mean, it's it's been true consistently throughout these six applications of students that I've helped get in. And basically, you know, you just imagine I'm asking you about your flashcard software and you say, oh, you know, I built it. And what did you do with it? That's what MNT wants to know. You can't just have built something. It's usually not enough. You need to have tried to sell it. You need to have tried to market it, right? Imagine you built that flashcard software and you're like, hey, I built it and I got contracts down for like three different schools and we are piloting it and, you know, it's had some successful tests and we have, you know, some investors interested. We pitched in front of three separate investors. They, you know, one of them wrote us a check for $40,000, although we declined the offer. But nonetheless, it was a great learning opportunity. That kind of stuff is impact, right? Or better yet, if you could get funding, I mean, that's even more impact. But the whole point of MNT is to take engineering knowledge and use that to do something in the real world. MNT is not a research program. I mean, people do research within the program, but it's not MIT. Right? It's not a school where you're meant to just go become the greatest deep tech engineer and then sit in your lab tinkering all day. Although, again, there are people like that. Don't get me wrong. But really what MNT is positioned for and the generally more successful applications are along the lines of, hey, I want to do some of this deep tech stuff. I mean, it doesn't have to be deep tech, but just an example. I want to do some of this deep tech stuff, but at the end of the day, I want to sell it. Here's an example of some deep tech stuff I was doing in high school that I was trying to sell. Or for example, here's, you know, the flashcard software I was really interested in building. I love education. And, you know, here's uh, how I tried to sell it. Or here's how I tried to help people with it. It doesn't have to be selling. Nonprofits were actually very common within uh, my students that were applying. So, I mean, a couple of them were doing nonprofits, even actually similar nonprofits or nonprofit type work. And they got in. I mean, he doesn't really care what you do. It's just that you do something and have impact with it. And that's something that you have to do has to have tech involved in some way. Although it sounds kind of cliche, right? I'm like, okay, do tech and then sell it like business, that's management and technology. It's really what the program's looking for, right? Um, aside from that, I think students fall into a lot of common pitfalls, uh, so to speak, with their extracurriculars thinking that, you know, either they're not technical enough, for example, where they don't really need to be technical. Again, if you can sell, that's proof of technicality enough. Uh, like I said, one of the pitfalls is people think they have to be business. They can be nonprofits. Business is broadly defined. If you want to go and help people and have impact on people by helping them, by teaching them, by doing something along those lines, those are perfectly legitimate business extracurriculars. You don't need to, like, it doesn't have to involve money necessarily. And even if you fail at something, right, even if you go pitch it and fail, that's still valuable. That's something that MNT definitely values. And just like entrepreneurs value failing, 
MNT also values it. And uh, that's not to say that you can't get into MNT without like being entrepreneurial. You can definitely get in and not be super entrepreneurial or like have a focus on wanting to do something else. But the general applicant is definitely pr putting forth more of a dream, more of a goal uh, that's a little bit more entrepreneurial in nature. And MNT kind of wants you to be more entrepreneurial within the field that you're in. Do something different. Do something that requires you to actively go out, that requires you to do be a self-starter. And of course, uh, you can't get into MNT without telling some sort of story. Uh, I alluded to it early in the video, but without having some reason why that you want to do such, you know, such and such engineering, or without having some strong story behind your engineering, uh, it just looks like, you know, a list of extracurriculars. I'm not interested in reading a resume, nor is MNT. It's boring, and I can read your Common App extracurricular list. I don't care. Like, okay, I care to some degree, but more important than your extracurriculars is telling that story behind them and why. Now, I want you to weave in your extracurriculars throughout the story. I don't want it to just be a story throughout the essay. I want it to be, this is my passion, here's why, and here are some of the extracurriculars that have substantiated that I've been interested in this. It's not just, here's my extracurriculars, it's not just, here's a story, but I want to see a weaving, an interweaving uh, of them, so to speak. So, for example, you could say, I'm really interested in health tech. I want to build health tech that allows people to move, that gives people mobility uh, or something like that. And you say, my grandma, I watched her, you know, I watched her growing up. She was in pain. She was suffering. And worst of all, she wasn't able to move and it made her depressed. You know, she couldn't use the facilities that she had been accustomed to for 75 years of her life. And taking away that mobility, I saw how uh, much it took the life out of her and how that caused her health to deteriorate more than anything. And because of that, I wanna build health technology that helps people move, that helps people move, you know, well. And we have flying cars, okay, maybe not flying cars, but we have, you know, self-driving cars, and we have all sorts of cool technologies out there. Why don't we have something that can help people just move a couple inches? Why do we have to focus on, you know, maglev trains, like, like magnetic levitating trains or things like that? Or like, why can't we just focus on things that get people to move around the house? And that's a good story. And then you weave in, you know, examples of extracurriculars you've been doing. You don't just say that, here's my story. You say, and I've been interested in this since I was in high school. I tried to build her a robot that helped her move um, by taking advantage of, you know, hydraulics or something like that. And I failed. I didn't know anything about hydraulics, but it was a great learning experience. And I took that knowledge and I built the second prototype, right? You don't just give up, right? You try and do something that helps people. I built the second prototype use different, uh, use different type of motors. And look, she wasn't able to move a ton, but it assisted her walking. Seeing her smile on her face was phenomenal. And I was convinced that I wanted to do this for the rest of my life. I went and I pitched this idea to a couple nursing homes and a few of them said yes. And now I'm piloting this project in a couple nursing homes and it's really not going anywhere. It's kind of in the early stages, but I went and I looked for funding to try and uh, get it you know, further along. I mean, hardware is expensive and you can't expect me to just pull $30,000, $40,000 out my hat. Uh, I'm, you know, still a 17 year old. And, uh, you know, then I went and I pitched to a couple of people and I was able to raise, you know, $50,000 and I'm continuing to work on this project. And although it's not complete, I want to use MNT to complete this project. I want to use the phenomenal education from engineering where I can learn about, you know, mechanical and electrical engineering, but pr primarily mechanical, but it has some great interdisciplinary action with electrical that I love to work on and learn about. And of course, I need that business angle. I want to sell this to nurse nursing homes. I want to help change people's lives. And if I don't do something that changes people's lives, there's no point in doing it anyway. And I want to use the business education from Wharton to really help me change people's lives my like my grandma. That's a story I just pulled off my head. And those are really the components of a successful MNT application or a successful M application to any college, to be honest. There are some differences between colleges. Uh, that's something you can get through advising if you're interested. Uh, you can email me. But generally, you want to have that story, that reason why for your story. You want to talk about why or what you want to do, right? What kind of engineering and why you need business and why you need engineering. What aspects of MNT and Penn are going to help you along that journey and why you absolutely need uh, you know, M&T, business and engineering, right? That I want that to ring throughout the essay. And of course, you want to talk about some of the things that you've done as to substantiate the kinds of dreams that you have or the goals that you have. It doesn't have to be in any particular order. I've seen multiple successful applications, but, uh, you know, I gave one example where I talked about why in the beginning, and then I moved on to some of the things that I did and why I need engineering and why I need Wharton and then M&T at the end. Um, that was one way you can write it, but there are multiple ways you can write it. With that, there are a number of things that I could say about specific students, but 
that's about what I can say generally. Every student really had a different application. And at the end of the day, I will say that applications are uh, personalized, right? They're very specialized in 55 students, 60 students that get into MNT. Everyone has a different application when applying and you need to tell your own unique story. So it's hard to give blanket advice. But if you're interested, uh, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I have advising. If you want to get personalized advice on how you can get into MNT, um, you can email me at Mustafa does stuff at gmr.com where I offer advising sessions and a number of things with those advising sessions uh, and I can help you give it your best shot to get into MNT. So with that, thank you so much for watching and I appreciate it.